Hello, wonderful people, and welcome to Critical Misses. I am Pope, your humble editor, narrator, thing. And I am joined by some wonderful, wonderful storytellers and superheroes. So enough with my jabbering. Let's go around and meet these wonderful people. Um, first up, Kayla, how you doing, friend? Hey, I'm do, do, doing all right, and I'm glad glad to uh, to be to be to be to be uh, to be to be here. My name is uh, K K K K Kayla Bell Belmont. You can find me on twi on Twitter at Kala Kala Kaleidoscopes, and I'm going to be playing Strider, the protege. Fantastic. Someone who is always fantastic is Donna. How are you doing, friend? Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Donna. You can find me on Twitter at Shabro. Super stoked to be here. Super stoked to, oh my gosh, it's very exciting. Um, Shabro is spelled X-I-A-B-R-O. Um, and I will be playing Apollo Lou the Janus. Awesome. Someone who has a very intriguing background with their character is Layla. How are you doing? I'm doing good. My name is Layla Bamanziari. I use they, them pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at L Bamanziari, and I won't bother spelling that, but you can find it on Critical Misses. Um, and I will be playing Starla Delara, the Reformed. <laughs> and someone who likes to throw a wrench into things at least their character does if not in real life oh. would we'll be Faye how you doing friend hi I'm doing good uh, I'm almost Faye or Faye um you can find me at almost Faye and I will be playing Saskia Abbott the Nova and I plan on causing chaos And these are our wonderful storytellers for this tale that we are going to weave. Uh, Mask is a wonderful time. It allows us to tell tales of young superheroes. And this is no different. The only thing that's slightly different is while Masks generally, generally focuses on high school, we're a little bit older. We're in college. And if you are you know, elder millennial here, uh, grew up with 90s comics of, you know, Spider-Man and going to a university whose name we may or may not have just directly left. So let me get you into this world, folks. Um, we are in the Empire State. We are in the, the Northeast of the U.S., and we are right in Empire City. And we are focusing in, surprisingly enough, at Empire State University. Uh, is a university that sprawls across Empire City. Um, while there are a few featured in built-in campuses, there it's dotted throughout this metropolis. It is a mixture of old brownstones, high rises, glass edifices to, to man's power and hubris. And this is a world populated by every single superhero that you could have ever read about. All the way from the days of the golden ages to our very modern age. This is a world that knows that superheroes are real so is the supernatural though some people as we are often to see in our modern age may be in a different degree or level of denial about these realities or conspiracy theories as this is a way to explain away far more mundane nefarious deeds but whatever trade papers that you are reading uh whatever news that you are watching this world, heroes are real. So are their villains. But we don't necessarily feature in a fight just now. Instead, between all of the youthful heroics, there is 
modern life. The modern life of a university student, which is where we meet our gang today. Um, in one of the commons between, between classes, uh, we find our heroes gathered around a scenic park bench at uh, late winter. It's just that part where in the northeast you're about to experience that false spring. So the temperatures have temporarily gone up. Um, folks are in sweaters but not bundled up for the freeze of the previous months. Instead, there there is no snow. It's just crisp air, not a cloud in the sky. It's a beautiful day. What's less beautiful might be the workload our students are facing. So let's go around and please describe yourselves and what sort of stresses you're currently under as you all are meeting in this common. And let's not go by by normal order. Let's popcorn this because I'm feeling a little chaotic today. Um, so Faye, if you wouldn't mind going first and uh, describing Scribe Saskia and what they've recently been dealing with at school. Um, so Saskia is, I think the way we described it in character building was they're kind of like the sorcerer sort of person where they're the really infuriating one in your class that doesn't really pay attention but still somehow gets good grades. Um, <laughs> they are like the infuriating one that will sit at the back doing nothing, ignoring most of the lecture, probably causing problems for other people, um, and still comes out with like an A or a B. Um, <laughs> and they are also an RA at the university's uh, Empire Village in Bitterhausen Hall. And they're, they're the RA that sneaks, like, they'll sneak the people into the grounds for you, past, like, all of the security. Like, they are the RA that causes problems for every other RA, and they enjoy it. Um, yeah. So, on this, this brisk winter day, what is, if anything, bothering Saskia? Uh... The fact that they've got like a bunch of deadlines and they really just can't be bothered doing any of it, they're gonna they're gonna submit something, but it's gonna be like a three AM like boba high um mess of words and they don't care at this point in their life. So that is how we find Saskia. Um at this moment, how how are we finding uh, Apollo in all of this? What, what, are, what, how are they doing and what is he facing? Apollo is currently facing um, a limited decision in terms of the outfits he can wear, especially since it's winter. He is currently sporting a hideous furry purple top that borders the line of Hope Couture and Hope Glue. He has a black and yellow checkered isometric style pant that he's wearing as well. And he's got these garishly green boots, but he's warm. And so the problem is, is that everybody who's seen him has seen these sort of pieces in a fashion magazine, but together they're not supposed to go. And so he's currently dealing with the looks that he's getting, but he doesn't have anything normal in his closet, anything that you could consider not eye-catching. Um, but that's like more of a, <laughs> of a shallow concern, I suppose. He's also, uh, he's on, he's actually on top of his schoolwork, thankfully. Like, you know, it's the near the winter, finals are coming up or midterms or whatever, the sort of big tests at the end. He's on top of it. He's got all his assignments done or is it 
has a timeline, very neat calendar. What he's dealing with is that he's got bills to pay. He doesn't want to rely on his family to pay his water bills, electricity bill, um, any sort of utilities. But he hasn't exactly been taking enough shifts at the boba shop to cover it. So he's a little bit stressed about that. Oof. That, that's a lot. Ow! Like, I I just got, a, like, a text from 25-year-old me that's going, <laughs> hey, take it easy on Apollo. Um, <laughs> but we cannot do that. And so I want to hear now what uh, Starla is up to. How do we find them today? And what trouble are they facing? Um, Starla is frantic as per usual. Um, they have class. They're skateboarding to their class. And I would like to say they are skateboarding in high heels because they don't give a single fuck. Um, they're, they're like running into class. They're like, um, put, they're taking their hair down from skateboarding so it didn't get like caught in anything and no one tried to like pull it or something. Um, and it's like, it's foundations of improv and they just always almost sleep through this class every time. And so they have like their, they have their saffron boba tea and they're trying to suck it down as fast as possible because the class takes place in the theater, but you're not allowed to bring drinks that aren't water <laughs> into the theater. So they're literally five minutes late, right outside the door, just, just sucking as hard as they can on this boba tea. Hoping they don't choke. Um, and after this, they will probably have to have a rehearsal for the musical Indiana exclamation point, the musical. Um, and um, their ensemble, don't worry, they didn't get the lead. Um, and yeah, they'll probably have to work after this, go to the arcade and help out a little bit as they typically do. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, and as a former university improv professor, I I am I am already getting flashbacks and I'm angry. Um, <laughs> I already know who this professor is. His name is JJ. He is big, jolly, mostly jolly uh but like has the body and build for those of you out there who are familiar with muppet christmas carol he is the ghost of christmas present in human form well you know uh, what starla is haunted so i think that works pretty well <laughs> yeah no big jolly giant red beard ruddy face generally jolly just disposition but at the same time is like six four and maybe half as wide he, a giant of a man um and at the same time he can be like the nicest like giant cuddly teddy bear of a professor but at the same time if you somehow some way it under this man's skin he is one of the most terrifying forces of nature on this earth and you have fought super villains but none of them are quite as scary as as he when he is angry um so we now have that in the world um so kayla tell me how scott is doing and what trouble is he facing Sorry, I forgot that I muted myself. Um, he's doing all right. You see Scott has this um, kind of short, sporty, black hair, green eyes. Um, he's got a lean build. Um, and he's he's wearing um, this kind of den, 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 uh, denim uh, uh, shirt. Um, oh, 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 for what, seem, what seems to be like this... Uh, 
plaid t-shirt, which is interesting. Um, these baggy uh, jean pants and some uh, uh, some good shoes. Um, he's he's do 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 doing all right in class. Um, pat pat pat. He's got a passing gra grade in most. Um, um, for him though, he's just kind of bored with the whole thing. Um, because for him, he's done this before. Um, but he's currently on the bench just kind of with a cup of like, um, of, of sin, of sin, of sin, of sin, of sin, of sin, 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 sin sorry, cinnamon tea. Um, and is currently trying to scroll through his phone to see if there's any news that is interesting because he really does not want to go home right now. Like, that's the last thing he wants to do right now. And as as much as I dread to ask this, but I must, mm -hmm. why doesn't Scott want to go home? Because uh, not really home right now. Um, it's in empty building and um it's a very complicated thing especially between him and his mentor um that he just does not want to be there by himself even though he's supposed to it's got a very much like either do condone superhero work or school or home, and that's it. And it in, it infuriates him to no to no end. So these are the quick little flashes and panels that that we see with these characters. The, these little quick cuts that you can see upon the page. Um, of of Saskia just going about we can see the the open laptop screen in a room that is completely dark and just sitting there staring at, at as we have all done where you have that document open and it's just there's not a word on the page there's just the cursor flickering And then it sort of just like spirals and kaleidoscopes around that one image. Um, we, we see Apollo with that closet of incredibly fashionable attire. Like th this is stuff you would see if, if say you were in London, like this is high end fashion, this in New York. This is, this is the stuff that, you know, designers make and put out there just a closet filled with the stuff. But on this particularly crisp, but not freezing day, there's nothing that quite works together. And as we pan away from cutaway and having our beautiful panel, we see just a pile of bills on that little like desk table right by the door in your apartment where you just, that's where you throw the things that you don't want to deal with. And we see a lot of letters on that little side table. Um, we, we see a, our large formidable foe of, of, of JJ. They're just staring off stage as the rest of the class is gathered there on it. Um, waiting because he can hear. He's got exceptionally good hearing. He can hear the slurp of Boba at this point. And there, that jolly demeanor, one, one little blood vessel in the eye goes from normal to just flared. One nostril just kind of snorted um as starla is sucking down that last bit of happy juice before going to this class and can he see me 
No, but he can hear you. Okay, just hear. <laughs> uh, he knows. By this time in the semester, he knows. <laughs> and then with Scott, we, we can already see like cuts to the Strider uniform sitting there in the lair, sitting there in the base. See newspaper clippings of him back in the day of newspaper clippings of the Vale, Strider's mentor, teaming up with all sorts of heroes from street level to those that deal with cosmic threats. A storied hero, one not necessarily loved, but respected, feared by some. And an empty base for those who follow the comics, it's one that we've seen before with another youthful team that Strider was a part of at one time. But instead of populated by friends, heroes, all, it's empty. It's empty by a few boxes that Scott has left to his name, that Vale brought from a vault that Vale kept when Scott went missing. You can even see a single moth hanging in a closet. That one now entirely out of style jacket, moth eaten, bunch of wire hangers hanging in that closet. There's a few tables, but there's not really any furnishings in that room. That base, it's quiet. Unfortunately, quiet. Now we have this this big panel. After all these things, of our four heroes gather around one of those plastic line corrugated park benches that you see, modern bench, um, and there they are. Between, between classes, betwixt everything, having a moment together. It's not that long ago that they just recently started working together. Strider and Apollo have had a few dealings before. The Mark, Starla, probably more in the know than most, knows of these individuals. And Saskia, well, Saskia is there to cause whatever good trouble they can. And so it wasn't that long ago that they all joined up. They may have done like two other significant jobs since. It's been three months since the incident. And in this moment, you all are together and you all have one class. Doesn't meet today. Not today. But tomorrow night, you all know that you're going to have to attend the Ripper's Introduction to Psychology. And you need to exchange notes and get ready for how that monster takes attendance. The floor is all of yours. So, I'm sorry, what if we all just didn't show up? If we messaged everybody else and told them not to show up, do you think that they maybe would also not show up? And then he couldn't be mad at us for not showing up because oh, no one did. Oh, I think, I think, I, um, I think he can, yeah, he'll, he'll be mad for sure. Like, if the whole class doesn't show up, I'm pretty sure. Okay, if only I didn't show up, do you think he'd be more or less mad? I'm pretty sure he would kick you out of the class. He's that kind of asshole. I needed to graduate. Great. Great. Trust me, the guy has his 
a stick of his ass that is about two miles wide. Three miles long. Um, also, yeah. Saskia. No, Starla. Saskia's me. I've been up too late tonight. Um, Starla. If I am having to suffer through this class, so are you. You know, I got an extra boba tea for later. I need that caffeine, you know. Do you want it? I can get another one. Yes, please. Okay, here you go. Here you go. Here's It's saffron. I hope you like saffron. It's caffeine. I don't care at this point. I get it. I get it. We've uh, been... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Paul. Paul. No, no Paul, you guys are good. I just, um... Is this class really that bad? Yeah, he is um, very set in his ways. So let's just say that. I mean, just like Apollo pulls out this binder that's has like color coded notes and everything. He's like, you just it's just this, right? You just pay attention. It's kind <sighs> of easy. Sasuke feels like like a, a napkin. <laughs> is all folded up and unfolds and it's like oh it's not glass and it's just a like a really bad cartoon drawing of the ripper just being like asshole and yeah. It's Starla, like, yeah yeah starla shows some notes and they're literally so unintelligible <laughs> literally even i can't read my own notes guys i don't this this class is right after theater history focus on shakespeare and my brain is liquid by the time I get to this class. It is hard. That's why I sit in the front. No. He can see you there. He's he can smell. see you anywhere. Like wet socks. Why would you sit in the front? <sighs> At least I guess it keeps you awake. I don't... I just, I'm just there to take notes. It's an interesting subject. Why do you take notes? Some of us need to take notes. Paula, do you I mean, like taking notes? Like, yeah. is it an activity? What if you took double notes? Did you, or what if you also took notes for me and like a separate thing? Then you're taking more notes. And if you like taking notes, extra notes. I could also just photocopy the notes that I have now and give them to you. I guess that would be easier. Yeah. That <laughs> makes sense. It's just the printers at the library rarely work. And I, and I know how much of a hassle they are so sure i i think one of my like one of my people in my dorm i think one of them has a printer i could hijack yeah we still understand the whole printer thing right because like you have email and like pdfs now right why would you use printer because paper is fun and you can scramble it up and throw it at little life-size I'm gonna s I'm gonna say too much. You I... have already said enough. I can already get <laughs> a mental idea in my head of what's going on there. You know I shouldn't have the abilities that I do, but because I do, I can make life size versions of the Ripper and throw things at him. And it's fun. It's stress relief. Wait. Can I do that with you sometime? That does sound like fun. That, we could do that I mean, instead of the skipping whatever, yeah. like skipping arrows. Look, we're well, we're yeah. we're we're too stuck on these notes right now. You know, you know what the the team does need right now. He's gonna look around. We should go on patrol. Just tonight, um, it'll be fun. Did you just say it'll be fun? Yeah, it'll be fun. What you are know, you guys patrolling? Jumping, you know. Oh. New York. Okay. You know, look for bad guys. Like bullies? I thought patrol meant just going down to like the arcade and trying to steal a slice of pizza from the possum. I mean, we can do that too, but I'm just saying. As long as if, it's after if... 10 p.m. because that's when I get out of rehearsal. Like I can't. I, I have to be there today. That's fair. I think. Probably. 
Mm -hmm. well, I, I, guess I don't I know could, what this oh, but... troll business is, but just make sure you just, you know, stay out of trouble. I mean, we could probably... Come well, on, actually, Apollo. patrolling, we're trying to find trouble, Apollo. Be great. I think that's the yeah. actual point. Um, oh, okay. I, we're trying I to can't... find bad guys, you know? Yeah, oh. we're the trouble. We're the and, trouble. And we turn the page. Because huh? that's what we do in comics. And page is turned. And as we see the, upon this new page, um, we cut to a boardroom. It's very posh, very well put together. And there are multiple screens all playing at once, different parts of the city, different previous bank robberies. Robberies of different tech conglomerates. And then very well dressed is Candace Esper, one of the higher ups and the villainous organization known strictly as the corporation. So far, business has been good. New York has been weak as of late, as some form of transdimensional or cosmic threat has called most of the capes away. And so we have gotten to play. But I have a good idea that those nights, those days are coming to an end. And so we must be productive in these last days before our troubles come back home. And so I put to each of you, we need to hit every single large bank, tech giant, artifact dealer, warehouse in this city before the end of the month. We rate it all. We take everything. And then before our troubles come home, we leave. We leave this burned out with every bit of goods we have and we move let them come back to empty stores empty places and return to their lives none the wiser and out of our hair do I make myself clear and we pan across to those gathered at this table and it is a hit row of villains. We, we see the team of safe and sound. Safe being a armored tech villain. One who has a penchant for taking other people's stuff, in, incorporating it into his suit and somehow making it better. And Sound, his partner in crime, um, a mutant who has the gifts of a, a sonic blast and being able to control sonics, allowing them to fly. They also have enhanced durability and regeneration. The two of them make one hell of a team and have caused folks no end of pain and suffering in this city. And they specialize in taking every single bit of tech they can from heroes, other villains, and domestic tech houses that they can get their grubby little hands on. Sitting next to sound is 
more like Esper. Very well dressed individual. Um, white suit, blue shirt, black tie, striking, white gloves. Everything says put together about this gentleman. Till you get to the mask. And the mask is this highly stylized lion mask. Something out of a Greek play made out of bronze. Patina. And this is an individual simply known as myth. They are a magician. They call upon the mystical powers of the old ways, the old Western traditions of magic, conjurer by trade, able to summon monsters of the golden age. Not too long before most of the heroes in New York are now missing, summoned a chimera in Times Square. That was a time. Um, so yeah, he's sitting at this table. And then we come around to the opposite side. And there is a surprisingly someone young maybe even younger than our heroes at least in appearance um wearing a rancid t-shirt um denim jacket uh converse sneakers propped up on the desk no respect for anyone here um big red faux hawk like em over over one one eye um and the they're just known as punk and they have a problem with every bit of authority they love to prank the police they live for pranking heroes and putting them up on they have they're a villain with their own youtube they have a hatreon. They are publicly funded. Malice. This dude has a fan base and a band. Um, and he is sitting here getting pointers from the corporation. Um, sitting a Good dis there's a chair that's empty next to punk. We're fairly certain it's empty. It might be the invisible man. We haven't seen him since the golden age, but he may be there. Um and then next to that empty chair uh is a a, a woman who couldn't be more of a contrast to punk. Like that little black dress, like the height of fashion, little black dress, sitting there, obviously bored out of her goddamn mind. Um, and does not, obviously, does not want to be there, has better things to do. Um, is Ms. Malice, um, possibly one of the most villainous and powerful telekinetics on the entire Eastern Seaboard. Like, this is somebody who, who can look at the Statue of Liberty and rearrange it. This woman has crushed tanks with her mind. Somehow, the corporation has her here. And sitting at the other end of the table is 
the most odd amongst them. Simple dude. Nothing special about him. Just wearing plain black t-shirt, khaki slacks, like looks like somebody who should be working at a Best Buy. But for those who are in the know, this man's everywhere because that's his big ability. He makes copies of himself and they're all networked. This is the hive. And he is here and he is listening to this briefing. And he's the first one to speak up. Some of you are not as connected to the city as others are. And Esper, while I can agree with taking while the taking is good, leaving is not something that we do. Now you want to go offshore to some other place. That's your business. But this city is our business. And I'm not leaving it. Also, I have it on good authority. And he just sort of smiles. That there are plenty of heroes in the city. They just haven't made a big enough wave yet. So, also, you've lost track of Vale, haven't you? And he just looks over to Myth. And Myth's hand wraps upon the table. I lost track of Vale two nights ago. I don't know how. But... She managed to remove the mystical trace I put on her. She's the last thorn on our side. And she's loose. And we turn the page. Scott! You have a communicator on you at all times. Hmm, William? It's hard to forget that. And you just get a simple buzz from it. When you look down, it's a message from Vale. <sighs> Shit. Hey guys, two minutes. I gotta take this. Oh, okay. Sure. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back. Um. Just you let me know. Can no you get me a soda? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Anybody else want anything? Yeah. Orange Fanta. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Okay, orange um, Fanta. Uh, monster. And gotcha, I'm monster. like extra caffeine, like the little oh. caffeine things that they do to add to it. You know, that's, that's bad for you, right? No, nah, I don't care. I think all there's right, a specific right. flavor that actually goes really well with the saffron boba. So you could mix them together. I was going to finish the boba by the time we got back with the monster, probably. You know, I believe that. You know, that makes sense, too. That <laughs> just, works. just go for it. Just go for it. I mean, I've all got right. extra I'll be flavor. back in five. Bye. Bye. And I walk off and I, like, choose a discreet, like, spot um where there's like no cameras no nobody around like a back alley somewhere and just lean up against the wall and kind of turn on the communicator so i can't talk for long the city's in danger the operation is moving while the heavy hitters are out of town, they've taken notice. 
going to try and do what I can to sabotage the heavyweights. But I need you and your team to pick up the slack. There is likely going to be a number of break-ins over the course of the next week. Stop them if you can, please. She never says please. It's really that bad, huh? It's that bad. Does it mean that I don't have to check in with you every time I go out to look for these folks? Just give me a report once a week, okay? I need to know that you're safe and I need to know if I'm going to help you, if we're going to help each other. I need to be able to point out where things went wrong and what to do next time. We clear? Yes, ma'am. Good. Clicks off. We turn the page. Mm -hmm. So, Apollo, you've got bills. You also have a double life. This evening, what are you doing? Paul is not going to go patrolling. <laughs> he is going to take a double shift at Tai Chai and try and make ends meet. And figures that, you know, if his friends from class stumble on in, complain about courses and stuff like that and then maybe see if there's anything that overdrive needs to handle but he's gonna play it cool okay with that choice i'm gonna move your labels choices matter in this system folks <laughs> and so i want you to up your mundane and down your danger. Okay. My mundane's all maxed. So you take condition instead. Okay. So what condition are you taking? Guilty. I'm going to take guilty. That makes sense. Yeah. Kind of feeling like, oh, like... Maybe I should don the mask and be overdrive and just pop in and be like, hey guys, how's it going? But I also cannot, I will not be able to handle it if my water gets cut off. And then my family will know that I'm struggling and then my life will crumble. So with guilt in your heart, you go and take a double shift. So right after class, you're there for the evening shift and the closing shift. Because anyone who's worked in New York, places close at 3, which means you're out of there at 4 a.m. It's a long night. So, Starla. You do have rehearsal that evening. Um, How long until you guys premiere? Um, I imagine because we want to make the chaotic and tense choice here. It is tech week, everybody. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> it is tech week. Uh, um, and I am but a measly ensemble member because I'm not good at theater. I just didn't know what else to major in. Um, I, I I imagine, I don't, what, what day is today? Let's say today because it needs to be just the worst day on Tech Week. 
because we're going to make those choices. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, um, <laughs> which means that um, last weekend we had two um, 10 hour days. Um, and we had a dress rehearsal last night. We have a dress rehearsal tonight. We have two more dress rehearsals and then we open. And I don't know the songs. I really don't. Um, I've been busy trying to pass my classes and not get killed while also fighting other people. So I'm really, every time I'm in rehearsal, I'm like, vaguely singing the same thing as the person next to me and hoping no one notices. It's like a pretty big ensemble. So like there's a chance that that might work or at least Starla is like, I'm sure no one can tell. I'm sure no one can tell. And that would be stressful enough. It would be. But someone has decided to sneak in and has snuck in to the theater while you're doing tech. No one else seems to pay attention to this old woman, but she sticks out to you like a sore thumb. It looks like Magnum, also known as Agnes Ames, a Silver Age supervillain retired has snuck in to your dress rehearsal. She's just taking a seat in the audience. There are the director and assistant director are right up front, so they haven't noticed. The booth is out on a raised platform. She's in the perfect blind sight for everyone else in this theater. She's wearing dark garb, but she knows how to be seen by who she wants to be seen by. And while you're fumbling through the steps and the words, your eyes meet, she smiles. It's almost like a cat when they're about to pounce on prey. Starla just absolutely meets meets the gaze. And like, other than to make sure they don't trip while they're dancing, um, keeps, just absolutely keeps that stare because they don't trust like to look like to look away and look back and it not her she just not be gone. Actually, I think we need a roll for this. Oh, rolling. <laughs> I in this moment, as you two lock eyes and you're not trying to to mess up your dance steps, I want you to roll superior. Roll superior, got it. Dun, 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 dun. I'm not very superior, y'all. Two. That's a miss. Damn, um, that makes sense. Mark potential. That's the good news. But yeah. In a moment, you feel your legs just not do what they're supposed to do as you're trying to keep up with everybody. You're trying to hold appearances. You're trying to keep from having the director actually notice you instead of the the handful of stars for the show that they've been harping on for the past two weeks. And I make it worse for myself and say that I absolutely trip and face plant. Like I absolutely do that. Oh, I will always, always take worse. I rolled literally two natural ones. That's the only way I could have, like, I, I, I face plant so hard, I almost break my nose. Like, it's real bad. Yeah, there, there's a phrase, I know most of you haven't played with me before, that I love to use. And it's called, you tell me how this goes wrong. 
and I tell you how it's worse. So go ahead me and give me everything that goes wrong in this moment. Um, I think um, I trip, but as I'm tripping, I'm still trying to sing. So I just go, Aah! and then I just like absolutely land like, like, like I literally hit my face on the floor. Like I moved to the side just in time not to break my nose. Um, and I start trying to get up and I go, I'm okay, everybody. And then I trip again, like trying to get up because my balance is off from how hard I just absolutely ate it. Um, yeah. And here's how it gets worse. And boy, does it get worse. So the heel on your character shoe popped. It just went off um, like a shot. Uh, the director is completely fu flustered, just yells at the back, house lights, please. Um, and the stage manager, all right, everybody, let, let's, let's all take 10. We'll, we'll reset. We'll, we'll see what Starla needs. And then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from top of Act 1, Scene 8 and try and just get through this. And between all of that noise, you look up. Agnes is gone. I just yell, <laughs> like, just as loud as I can. I can't help it. And right as you yell, fuck, we turn the page. And Saskia, we know you have tons of stuff to do. But what are you actually doing this evening? Um... Saskia's gonna go and see her little friend, the um, pizza possum, over at the arcade. Okay, so we head to Rocky's arcade. Yeah. This, this is um, downtown. Um, it's a bit of a ways away from Empire State University. Not too far from one of the local high schools. It's one of those old, like this, this campus was built in the late 1940s, early 1950s. The preservation society has demanded it just be remodeled, not torn down sort of place. So big red brick. There's even like some like marble embellishments. Um, very, very art deco style campus and then just like two blocks down in uh, this large modern high rise um, there is some stairs wide stairs that go down to this place's basement and that's what opens up into Rocky's arcade the arcade is open from 5 p.m to 6 a.m. It's that kind of joint. Um, it has tons and tons of arcade machines from all eras, all incredibly well-preserved, up-to-date, what have you. There are a few machines that always take tokens and you need to feed the beast. Some are always on free play. Some, it pins on the day of the week. And they also have in this, like, it takes up the entire basement floor. Um, they have an old Tilt-A-Whirl from the boardwalk in here that on weekends they run. And there is a large, like, restaurant slash pizza parlor sort of thing. They do classic large New York slices, um, hot dogs, soft pretzels, nachos, a lot of your movie style fare. Um, 
And the other thing with this place is they have a lot of the like obscure or classic sodas or energy drinks, as well as having stuff on tap that you normally wouldn't. And then there's what you're looking for out back. Out back, which means above Rockies, there is a series of dumpsters to this place in this back alley. Like this entire back alley is just like, there's a fence that you, of course you can jump. Um, <laughs> and get back there. And there is like just a bunch of different uh, dumpsters. And in this back alley, there is a possum that may as well be the size of a German shepherd almost that it rules the roost of this back alley and this is their garbage. There are many different things that come back here and feast upon that which was discarded. But at the top of this very specific biome, this food chain lies the possum. Uh, Saskia goes to see the possum. And I'm imagining they've been te trying to teach this possum tricks just for shits and giggles. Like, they kind of want the possum as their, like, almost like somewhere between a sidekick and just, like, they just want this possum to be able to, con like, cause as much chaos as possible. So they're teaching it different things. What are you trying to teach this possum? Well, I'm how to so, love. No, <laughs> I'm. So, the possum is very, very large. Yes. Is has we're in a world of superheroes. <laughs> Has yes. the possum been an experiment of some kind? We will consult the happy sad die. <laughs> For those of you who have not experienced me as a ST before, when I can't consciously decide a thing, I consult this tiny white die. It has many faces on it. And it tells me what it is that we are doing. And so happy sad die. Is this massive possum an experiment? Come on, experiment. Come on, experiment. It is an experiment. Yes! <laughs> yeah. uh, so Saskia is a double major with a minor. Their majors are in chemical and computing engineering. Mm -hmm. They are trying to teach this possum how to rig all of the arcade machines below to win all the tickets to bribe humans to get more pizza, but fresh pizza. However, this will be a transferable skill at a later date, Saskia believes. Um, because chaos. I, I need to consult the basic moves <laughs> to see where on the list training an experimental <laughs> possum to rig arcade machines goes. Um, I have to say, I think this is the moment of truth. I think, I think this is it. No, no, I, I, no. Moment this of truths are special. This um, is the possum's moment of truth. This is special. This is it's true. the it's special true. thing in the world. The bond between a possum and the person taking advantage of them for entertainment. No, it, I'm not taking advantage of them for entertainment. Like, Saskia wants this possum to do well in life. Props. Uh, no, no, no. Sure. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I see you. I, I thank you, guy in chair. I, I, I'm, I see the superior, but actually, this is an unleash your powers, considering the, the implications of working with experimental possum. Yes. And and causing this much chaos. So please roll freak. Um, can we please hope that this goes well? Because I want a possum familiar. I'm, that, I'm that, that, that's a thing so on another another playbook, but you could no! possibly take it. 
That Sasuke's is a getting, five. Uh, Sasuke's getting fucked up by a possum. The <laughs> possum does, is not amused by your hey, nonsense. Hey, Starla got fucked up by a dance move. So I think <laughs> you're doing at least a little bit better. So, no, we're just that's getting five. fucked up all over the place. Well, <laughs> add potential. So mark potential. Nope. That's the good news. Oh no. So, as we, we've we've been here before today, it's time to visit again because you are all excellent storytellers. So please tell me how this rose how this goes wrong, and I will tell you how it gets worse. Okay, because we're doing unleash your powers. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking at the different flares that I've got. And basically, Sasuke is going to accidentally cause a mini reality storm in this little arc, this little... This little back alley. There's going to be a reality storm in this back alley. Okay. I wasn't expecting you to go there, but hat off to you. Thank you. Um, so... We're going to the die because I have too many ideas. Oh, that's a big happy face. Um, so I've got... I can't really say this is good or bad news. This is just news. Okay. Um, so... In this reality storm, as, as like... There is so much movement and energy being released in this back alley. You are knocked and, and cannot move away from one of the walls. Uh, a number of the dumpsters shift and move. The possum is clearly frightened. It hisses and, and plays dead. And then from reality, um, this, this hand, this arm appears. It is distinctly androgynous. It appears to be made of multiple leaves, like the, the bright green leaves of summer. And it reaches out and snatches the possum. No! And drags the possum into some other reality. Shit. Just fucking killed the mascot. What? We've still it's got the subway wrap. If Starla gets back from rehearsal, they're gonna be so upset. I can't believe Pizza Possum died first episode. <laughs> I we have to figure out the, not the dead. rest of this. He's not but dead. God. I can't believe that the campaign, Pizza Possum died in the first we are, episode. We are ignoring the main quest. From now on, the rest of this show is going to be us trying to figure out how to get into this separate reality with Pizza Possum. We have in. to get. We have to get back. It's fine. We've still got Subway Wrap. But Pizza Possum. I know. <laughs> Rocky's going to be pissed. Oh, there are so many people who are going to be pissed. <laughs> um, and we turn the page. And um, because I love headings, this is one of the things I love about the visual storytelling of comics, folks. Um, so it just states Avalon in summer. Um, and we see King Oberon. That one, you know, yeah. of the Fae, is just going with this possum. Oh, aren't you just adorable? Yes, you were. You are just the cutest little giant experiment. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. You're coveted by people who can manipulate reality. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> and it was so popped. Yes, my lord. Do we, do we give this as a gift to my wife to mess with the heroes? That would be advisable, my lord. Um, no. Please gussy this creature up. I believe pink bows are in this season, right? Yes, my lord. Um, 
Yes, please gussy them up and see that Titania receives her present. Very good, my lord. <clears throat> and Puck comes striding along, retrieves Pizza Possum, and, and goes to give Pizza Possum a fey-like spa day. And then there are a number of pink bows attached to this creature. But we'll get to Titania receiving it later. <clears throat> and we turn the page. And while all of this horror as a hole was ripped in reality to Avalon of all places, um, we see Vale, um, Strider's mentor. Just, there's multiple watches that she wears along her left arm. Um, all of them have different data, times, etc. And one of them, we see her look intently as it stops at the very moment the reality storm happens. And she just looks at it and goes, taps on it, then pulls out a pad and pen, old school style, and just writes. And we see a list of other threats and problems that Vale is currently dealing with. And then at the bottom just writes, reality incursion writes the date and time. Slips into the back pocket. And then we see Vale do the superhero thing. Jumps parkours off of the building, down the sides of an alley, back and forth, to then hit the bottom street level. Um, and we see another hero we thought lost previous due to all the things going on in space right now. But, um, not quite a hero, not quite a villain. Tussled with Veil vale a few times. Sanguine. Um, She's a vampire. Think if a vampire and the Punisher were one person, that's sanguine. So I, uh, we finally decide to show up. We see the text box from sanguine. Yes, I decided to show. Are we going to work together or against each other? I think an arrangement can be made. So. We get to deal with your little Mickey Mouse gang to pick up the slack. I won't go after that one's family. I'll let them live for now. But if they get in the way, Vale, well, sometimes I just don't have control of the beast. You understand? Just try and keep it reined in for now. I need them working. I can't have them distracted one way or another. 
All right. I'll try and keep things ringed in. You look the other way. Understood. And that, folks, is where we're going to take our break. So, take care, get up, have a refreshment, fill those drinks. We will be back soon to see just how much more wrong the city can go before our heroes have to burst into action. Take care, everyone. See ya.
Hello, wonderful people, and welcome back to Critical Misses Masks Advanced Studies. Um, we just got back from break. Uh, quick little housekeeping thing here. You, yes, you, can interact with our story. You can do this through redemptions from those delicious channel points. Um, so you can plus one weapon. This is most likely going to be a plus one forward in system. What that means is the next roll that an individual makes gets a plus one to it, which in this system, it's big. Um, plus two magic item. This is why I like to refer to as MacGuffin time. Um, I am from the John Constantine School of Magic. Everything is cursed, um, but everything is useful. So a MacGuffin will appear in the comic that our heroes may or might wisely may not interact with uh, and will give them some sort of benefit and detriment for its usage. And then cursed object. Cursed object for our, our foreseeable future means that um, I'm just going to use that as an excuse to introduce yet another villain to our campaign so if you want to populate this city's rogues gallery to gotham like levels feel free to spam that um i will try and get them on screen but i cannot promise they will all be there or confront our heroes but i will have a cavalcade of things from asylums to penitentiaries to boardrooms to just fill with villains. So feel free to hit that cursed object and give us another villain. Um, also, hurt just, us, please. Hurt also, us. I hurt love us. MacGuffins. So that, that plus two magic item. Yeah. There's, there's going to be all sorts of terrible things that they can come across and use that's going to bite them in the butt. Um, so by all means, please, please, please interact. We'd love to have you. And speaking of love, turn the page now that we are back. Um, and we, we just see a full page panel of our, our, our pizza possum just in the hands of Queen Titania. I love him! And he's just like squishy, like. Oh, you, love, you have social attachments to so many people in your city. <laughs> These entirely striking sapphire blue eyes just gleam with both delight and malice as you can see almost the gears turning in this phase head as to what to do with this most delightful boss that's been experimented with been exposed exposed to a reality storm has been in avalon is now in the hands of the queen of the summer fay let me turn the page And so we have seen what the evening has held for Starla, for Apollo, for Saskia. Now we check in on Scott. Scott, what are you up to this evening? Um, as, as, as soon as I, like, I had got the call, um, I had like te texted folks like, "Hey, sorry, um, I gotta go back home. Something came up." Um, I get back to the base. Lights go on. Pew, 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 you know. Um, and I start to suit up uh, with my new suit. Um, it's a. It's kind of like a dark gray. Um, there's a bit, bit of a splash of pur of, pur of purple um, on this like line that goes down like a kind of like um, 
like vest chest thing, you know, where it's like it goes to the side and then like buns on one side and it's got like an S on there. Um, but while I'm doing that, I'm just looking at my old costume, my old spotlight costume. Um, and I just kind of stop. I know that there's like this, this like helmet that I'm supposed to wear with the new suit. It's like one of those like futuristic full like full mask kind 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 of things, kind of like a Daft Punk look. But I keep looking at just the just the simple um, cla cl uh, classic like sidekick like uh, star patches, yeah, on the old mask. And I pick that one instead and put it on. Okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna message the rest of the team. Hey, we've got a code red. I need you to meet here. And so, in this moment, mm -hmm. because one of the things that you have are communicators, mm -hmm. but I always like it for like the group to decide whether they're uniform or does everyone have their own like individual special calm I, I i'm always intrigued by these answers for scott i think it's like an embed an embed like an embedded like chip on his neck hmm. it's like a somewhat like of a surgery thing but it's just kind of in there so he just kind of puts it up to his neck with like two fingers puts it on okay so saskia what's what's your calm look like uh saskia's calm is probably like a, a hidden bluetooth thing um but it has the ability to have attachments for it. So like, it's usually just a hidden thing, but sometimes they want to they wanna look fancy. So like, you know, the sort of Bluetooth earbuds that have like the, the pointy ears, like they'll do that with it just because they're bored one day. And I think just now that's probably what they've got in. So it looks like Bluetooth earbuds, but hidden like inside their ear is their um communicator okay sarla what does the calm look like i think that starla's calm is uh looks like lipstick actually honestly is lipstick but then like you can there's like a little compartment in the lid that they can like click or something and it turns into a calm and so sometimes when they're in the bathroom, they're pretending to put on lipstick, but they're also muttering to themselves. So it looks really weird because their mouth is moving while they're trying to put on lipstick. I love it. I love it so much. And what's Apollo's calm look like? Apollo's calm is a good old fashioned flip phone. And he will hey. flip it open and put it up to his, to his, to his ear to communicate. Nice. Very nice. And so a, a code red from Strider goes out into the night. Um, amongst you, who is the first to respond? I don't respond over calm, but I do start heading there. Like, I don't tell him I'm going. I think it's just I show up every time there's a code red so fast that I just... I don't even have to say it. Like he knows I'm on my way. Okay. Who's the next in line to show or to respond? I feel like Sasuke will be like the first to actually respond. And it's just like, I'm on my way. Anybody want nuggets? I would like to, or I, then I respond. <laughs> I would like two nuggets, and I don't mean like two nuggets, I mean two orders of nuggets, at least six in each. Thank you. 
you're getting two 20 boxes. <laughs> and I'm I'm doing this into a lipstick. I want to remind everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah. Saskia's probably the last to actually physically show up, but they bring McDonald's. So I mean hmm. benefits. I, okay, I'm now just picturing that there's that again. Those, there's the high rises that have the uh, fast food joint in the corner, like where the corner of the road is. And all of two blocks away from the base is this McDonald's that's open 24 hours in this high rise. And the people there, like, they're, they're pretty much dead, like, drone like you know you've been to a mcdonald's you know these people there's like the one person that's there that's working the the late night a.m like early a.m shift that has way too much energy but everyone else there is dead dead either in the eyes or deep inside um and like you can come in their superhero outfits they do not respond they just take your order fill it give you whatever it is you need and as long as there is currency and no trouble they do not care except for that one guy that's working there from 1 a.m to 5 a.m he like has that part-time shift and is just delighted to see any superhero that's the reason he's taking the shift it's because superheroes go to this mcdonald's and they get stuff and his I absolute fanboy every time starla has to interact with him they're just like god <laughs> Every time they walk in and see him, they're like, oh, yeah. hi, hi, Jonathan, how are you today? So good. Your usual? Yeah, give me all the nuggets you got. Gotcha. <sighs> Part of the order that Saskia always gets is like the McFlurries, but she's also like, Right, you need to give me these ones, and then I get like two that are that have not got the chocolate in them. And those are for dipping the chicken nuggets and the like chips into. And I will not take criticism on that because it's brilliant. I have also decided, as an executive decision, this is the one McDonald's in all of New York whose ice cream machine always works. I, f I feel like that oh. might have been Saskia's decision, like. Did a reality <laughs> storm when they first got there and was just like that one works. I don't I care about the, the others. Idea. I love the works. idea that you did a reality storm and like you pulled an ice cream machine from a dimension where McDonald's ice cream machines don't break down. <laughs> yeah. It's like <laughs> just don't fuck it up. If you break that machine, I'm burning shit. Like, Darla just... goes, if you break that machine, I break you. <laughs> and this is why all the superheroes go to this specific McDonald's. The ice cream machine actually works. But it's reserved for just the superheroes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Everyone benefits. <laughs> like, this is, this is, this McDonald's is a protected site in New York. Not by super, <laughs> not just by superheroes, by everybody. Even the villains go, don't you fucking dare. I love the idea. Because after I've gotten also... my ass kicked, at five in the morning, I'm getting a <laughs> McFlurry. Um, <laughs> I love the idea that I've probably fought supervillains, or like we probably fought supervillains, and then met the supervillain at this McDonald's after the fight, and just been like, "Hey, we all need our nuggets, right?" Oh, the, the, there's just this. There's just this look across the way, and they're just like, "There's just this understanding. We're not doing this here. This is <laughs> where the ice cream machine could be casualty." Yeah, the, the, yeah. We, we... It's every other part of New York can get absolutely like leveled, and this one high rise, the rest <laughs> of the high rise is gone, but the McDonald's is fine. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 yes, yes, honor poet. It is mixed Switzerland. You, you've got it's it on. Mixed Switzerland. This is neutral. This is sacred <laughs> neutral ground. We are not fucking this place up. <laughs> Everything else is on the table. This isn't. Uh, 
The only thing that's on this table is McFlurries. Okay? <laughs> it, they also never run out of the mix because that would also be heartbreaking. So you can um, always get your McFlurries and your, your milkshakes. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to cash in that, that cursed object. There's a super villain that's the manager of this place. Oh. God. That's fine. And, and that's, <laughs> and that's <laughs> why it runs perfectly well. Oh. Wait, I go, you know, I don't like giving my money to bad corporations. I have a lot of ethics, but you know what? Nuggets trump ethics every time. <laughs> it's true. It's just That's just objectively true. Like, yeah. if if someone gets food poisoning here due to somebody's malpractice, that person disappears. Um, I'm just, I am, I am certain of it. I, th this McDonald's is now a canon place in all of my 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 stuff going forward. And yes, yes there is a supervillain that runs this McDonald's. Um, I look at Jonathan. I'm like, don't mess up my order, or I might complain about you. You know what happens. <laughs> It's not very heroic. McDonald's really just throws the ethics out of the window. The, the That's how they get everything like, on time. Um, we're technically heroes, but aren't we? We're all villains when we're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need a Snickers for real. <laughs> Their slogan is not like you need to make like, you, you're when you're hungry. Hey. You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a slogan. McFlurry. <laughs> and so yes, this is the chaos that is this game. I do I apologize for nothing. Um so Apollo. Yeah. You get this this red alert text from Strider. Um but you're also in the middle of a double. Yeah. Like th this is like I want to say around 11 p.m. at night. You've you've just you're you're not even close to break. What do you do? <laughs> Paula doesn't go. He doesn't go. <laughs> oh. Apollo oh. Apollo opens up the flip phone. Opens up a text message. It takes like forever for him to punch this in. And then he says, he punches in, he says, uh, like 15 H's and just hits send. What does uh mean? He's already there when we get this message because that's how long it took for you to <laughs> type out the message. I turned to, I turned to Strider. I'm like, I think that means more nuggets for us. <laughs> Apollo Apollo follows up with another text and it's like gonna need a hit and but that's it. Corpus on the mood. Uh, uh, so I want to try to influence Overdrive with this. Oh, you're gonna spend an influence. I'm gonna play the <laughs> captain. Like we really need you. Like it's bad. Bad. You can attempt to spend influence. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's let let's go into the deep deep rules here because I was I wasn't expecting this out the gate, but I am here for this. As long as y'all are like okay with this, because I don't want to like step on anybody's toes. So. You're good. You're just using influence mm -hmm. over overdrive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it. Okay. So <laughs> <that's>... Would you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't mind it. It's not me, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I have to look. I, I don't know what the rules are for influence. You know, this is, this is, well, this is expending an influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Where... Okay, so... Oh, I think I just can, have a plus one on any well, role that targets these people. You can... You can use that for, for the role. That's the passive ability. You can expend okay. to give them a minus two on a move they just made after the role. Mm -hmm. Inflict a condition on them. Or... Um, 
take an additional plus one on a move targeting them. So you can get actually, and this is after the roll. Huh. So, um, I think I want can, to do a provoke someone roll. You can do a provoke. It's at a plus one because it's specifically on a target that you have influence on. And thankfully, Overdrive also has a plus one against me. A roll. Yeah. So, so go ahead I'm going to send... Roll. roll that superior. I'm going to, like, send back, like, a text of just, like... I mean... When we, you know, bra, 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 uh, brought down the, uh, that, that mob ring, you sure, sure were a, mo a lot more resp resp responsive than this. So go ahead Sorry. and roll that support. I accidentally messed with my light and it's fallen. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Plus one. So I just put one or plus one? Just put into one. this. Okay. Just put one. Ooh, full <laughs> hit. There we full, go. Full hit. Okay. So, um, for PCs, um, so on a ten plus, if they, so here, here's your options. Uh -huh. uh, their overdrive. If you show up, you add a team to the pool. Um, if you don't show up, you mark a condition. What do you choose to do? Oh, shoot. I mean, Apollo already feels like guilty. Um, and so this is just going to eat him away on the inside. So... I think Apollo's not going to respond for a while, but like through like overdrive's not responding. He's not texting anymore, but Apollo is frantically trying to figure out how, if there's a way he can still get paid <laughs> and also show up. <laughs> but, um, but he's going to show up. Okay. If you want to try and finagle something, um, if you don't have it planned right now, you can just roll me superior to assess the situation and possibly figure out a plan. Okay. There. It, it's a hit. Okay. So with, with a hit, and we're, we're going to, again, finagle sort of this assess. Because normally you only get like a question off the chart, but here we're we're trying to use what's here and and massage these rules. Um, you can probably like try and go. You're not feeling well, but you're going to try and work through things but you're going to need to take some time in the restroom change clothes hop out rush the seven blocks to get to the base pop in go i have an emergency tell me everything and then try and pop back all performing this high wire double act of where you're trying to balance both things at once. That's what Apollo's gonna do. He's gonna, maybe not like sick, but he's gonna say, oh gosh, there's a family emergency, but I'll be back as soon as I can. So then he's able to like, not have the implication that he spent hours in a bathroom stall. Fair enough. Um, and yeah, no, you, you get to rush in. Um, so we have this base now strewn with nuggies and McFlurries. Um, and Mark, Loki, Strider, you're you're all there as eventually coming in. I'm guessing kind of like hurried and a bit ragged, 
is overdrive. Hey, decide to show up, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I left some nuggets for you. Thank you. That's really kind of you. Um, I can overdrive nice. is. Yeah, you are always nice. Uh, That's not oh. true. Okay, sorry I said that. Overdrive does not move to like take the nuggets. You can't. It's like, is it guilt? Is it? He just doesn't want to pull down his mask and eat them. Just like set it down on a table near you and go. Okay, for you for later. Oh, you can have them. I'm not gonna argue with that. Okay, great. I don't. Yeah, don't argue. <laughs> great. Are you okay? Yes. Singing with the tents. No. Do I do I look tense to you? Look not like in a confrontational um... way. I'm sorry, that came out really wrong. <laughs> I, I, I just meant I'm totally fine. Um. <laughs> I'm not gonna give him a look, like, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, the veil reached out to me uh, today, and he's gonna look point to a map that 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 that, uh, that he has that's kind of built into uh where they're trying to eat so it kind of moves a couple of like like drinks and bags and stuff like that okay so i reach over you as soon as you start talking to grab a mcflurry like completely interrupting you i'm sorry continue um so most of the big soups are out de 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 dealing with whatever thing that they're dealing with right now. I don't know what it is. Um, all I know, know is they're gone. Um, the Veil said that there's going to be a, a series of break-ins. And not just like banks and stuff like that. I'm talking like, like big tech, big magic... Um, and I think the court might be involved. Um, Pope, would I know, like, the, like, what spaces are, like, the most to be, like, most, most likely to, to be hijacked in town? Um, let's roll that superior again. And <laughs> Can I also do a I I decided, and you can tell me if you don't want this, that the Bitter Beans was an operation to move gold throughout the city that was like untaxed for like jewelers. So sure. that's also possibly a thing, maybe. What should I roll? Um, again, these are both going to be superior roles to try and like Amazing. get an idea of what the targets are. Um, is this at a Assess the situation role or just a straight superior 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 role? We're we're gonna say this is a straight superior at this point. Okay. Got a ten yeah. villain thing. Ah, well, no. previous villain thing. Strider, mark potential. Um huh? you're I, I think just everything that's going on is just taking a bit of an emotional toll. So right huh? now, like like this scene just reminds me too much of like when me and the old gang were trying to plot things. Yeah, you you end up going a little bit insular as as things just take take a toll on you. But yeah. <clears throat> the mark, you come on with your previous life and involvement, you you know if if all the big capes are gone, what back in the day you hit in a heartbeat um like there 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 are some sweet sweet targets out there now that there's not a quick response um so on top of like some of the more private wealth institutions some of the high-end jewelers folks that move you know the high material goods not just like gold but like superconductors things that are worth a good amount of money and people will pay for them without asking questions 
diamonds, emeralds, all all that 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 sort of fensible wealth. That's that's the easy marks. Those are probably going to be the quick things. But then, with the mentioning of like the magic, the high end tech that Strider put out there, you, you rack your brain a little harder, and then you go, oh, uh oh, As, oh no, <clears throat> you're going. So there's a number of superhero organizations that have bases here, bases that are now not going to have a rapid response. They're going to steal from the capes while they're gone. Of that's, course. That's going to be big. That's going to be like big doomsday level items that the villains can get their hands on with little risk. Yeah, there's going to be, you know, the regular superhero defense systems in there. But, is there, um, is there yeah. like a one like really big superhero whose place like wouldn't be um, that has like, you know, in Sky High, they have like this, um, I don't know if you've seen Sky High, but they have like this hall of fame of like with a bunch of like objects that they've taken from supervillains. Is there, is it possible it could be like something like that? Um, there, there's, that's more something tied with ages, but without superhero response for ages, the, the, the ages vault that's in town, which holds like all the super villain or past superhero tech that's just under lock and key, that's a target. There's like seven different superhero teams that have bases in the city. Those are all targets with varying levels of defenses. The Aegis Vault is probably like, if they're well organized and well funded, they might hit the vault. That has the biggest payoff if they succeed, but it's also the highest risk. Um, but yeah, there's some mid-level teams that probably have a couple of really like potent goods in their armories and vaults that there's no one to respond there. They might have some mid to low level defenses, but the biggest defense was they would respond. And if if the capes are away and the villains know this, it's open freaking season. When the capes are away, the villains will play. Um, I relay all of that to the group so we all know everything you just said um yeah guys this is this is pretty bad this is really bad this is like really bad so what are we thinking folks where are we going The, the the main vault, the Aegis vault, is the if if they go there and we don't protect it, that's really bad. But also, if we go there and that wasn't a target for them tonight, then it feels like we wasted a whole night. We don't have the numbers to like split up. Because if we split up and one of us gets caught, it's, it's an issue. I'm Overdrive. not going to leave a team like that. Yeah, Overdrive, isn't there um, a super you know or something in the city? Or is there, does anyone know any other supers in the city? I wouldn't say that I know <laughs> supers. Okay. I, well, yeah. I have somebody I could give a call, but I don't know if the phone works anymore for it. I, I could, yeah, like I could t text, but I don't know if, I don't know, like you're kind of on a, we're not really on a first name basis, you know, so. If their plan is to steal something and they've already chosen their targets, there may be someone, I may be able to figure out where they're going. And um, 
I would like to separate from the group. I'm like, hey, I'll be right back. I'm gonna try to get some information. And then I think I'm probably gonna contact, ooh, well, either Lovelace or Geoffrey, um, because those are the two people who I imagine would probably know about what the, those are my two connections that I imagine would probably know the most about this. Um, Ooh, I didn't know I was going to be doing this episode one. Thought I'd be playing it safer. No, <laughs> not happening. Um, well, I don't know. Geoffrey feels incompetent to me. I don't know why. Um, so I'll probably try to contact Lovelace and ask if um, she knows where they're hitting tonight um, since she's an intel person. You reach out to Lovelace, and on this night, she immediately picks up. Well, hello. So, what can I do for you, Mark? Hey, Lovelace. Um, we have a, let's call it an intuition that some, um, superhero vaults some cape vaults might get hit tonight while they're out of town and it would be really helpful to know which ones exactly are being hit oh. well i can definitely get you a list how of it yes since you're going to be out and about protecting these places, um, a few things could just go missing in the fight. Uh, and yeah, with that, I could definitely let you have that list. Okay. A few things will go missing and I'll leave them in our usual spot. That sounds fantastic. So, there's nothing being hit tonight. Apparently, Sanguine's on the prowl and everyone knows it, except for the pawns, as it were. So, let the bloodbath happen. The thing gets fed and then goes to sleep for a little while. At least that seems to be the plan from the higher ups. Um, but the thing that you should be most concerned about is <sighs> word has it safe and sound are going to try and hit up the House of Secrets. That would be catastrophically bad if they actually got their hands on what lies in that house. Now, what I'm asking you to acquire are minor things. Like, just a small bag of Sandmancer. Um, a... bauble. It, it, you can't miss it. It's a piece of red lacquered wood with some gold inlay. If you see an entire box that looks like that, leave it alone. I just want the fragment, not the box. And the, the last thing is there is a small photograph about the size of your hand. It should be laying up on a pin board. It's a photograph which shouldn't exist. It's one of Marie Laveau. I want it. Don't suppose you're willing to tell me what you plan to do with these items? This is excellent trade in my trade. If I need something, I can use these as collateral. Did you say Sanguine is going to be out tonight? 
Yes. That's why everyone's laying low. Well, at least the ones that are in the know. Okay. Well, I'll get you those items. And you said they're going to hit up the House of Secrets? They're going to... The plan is to hit the House of Secrets. Not tonight, but tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. They're going to hit it during the witching hour. So tomorrow night. So, 11.30 to 12.30. And if I were you, I would make sure that you try to get out of there before midnight. Stop them and get out. That place goes its own kind of strange once it hits midnight. Hey. Okay. Thank you for doing business. Always. And, and then the I just hang up. <laughs> yes, we click. I go to everybody. I go back. I'm like, okay, guys. I did some digging, made some deals I didn't like. And one, does anyone know Sanguine? Does, do we all know who that is? I have there a move is... for this. You have a move for this. Been reading the files. <laughs> Roll it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Let me just do this real quick. So we do no situational bonus. Say... It's a hit. So It's a hit. Okay. Uh -huh. On been reading the files. On a hit, tell the team one important detail you've learned from your studies. The GM will tell you what, if anything, seems different from what you remember. So you can fill in the blanks here. This is your your time to shape the story. So what do you know about Sanguine? So we already know that Sanguine is not liked by either villains or the capes, um, and for good reason. Um, uh, they take a no-holds-barred when it comes to, vi to, vi to violence and sometimes goes way above and beyond. Um, but um, if Sanguine's on the prowl, um, it's either one of two things. They're looking for uh, someone to feed off of, or they're trying to like, um, they're, they're involved in some way in some kind of hijinks. Um, that's probably with what's going on is probably involved with what's going on with the bad guys. Cause she doesn't like when this kind of shit goes down either. But, um, that's very much correct. The only thing that might be slightly amiss is mm -hmm. like you guys have been cracking down a lot of the gang level crime. That's a lot, a lot of what you guys have been doing for the past month or so. So the gangs have been relatively quiet. And that's like her preferred prey. Mm -hmm. So if she's on the prowl tonight, she's going after bigger fish. And she usually doesn't do that because the capes are upset about that. But given that what you know about the capes, Sanguine may be moving up the food chain. Some villains may not make it through the night. Probably going to see a couple of dead corpses in the news tomorrow. We're not going to try to stop? We're not going to try to stop them? I mean, I am. I'm going to go out there and see if I can stop it because I don't like how she she does things. But I'm going to let you all know right now, she's not one to hold back. Well, I would never expect an opponent to hold back. If anything, I think I'd be offended. Yeah. So, guess we're on a vampire hunt tonight, everyone? I pull out, I'm like, hey, my arrows are made out of wood. Oh, very nice, very nice. Loki, so. you got a few tricks up your sleeve? 
I've I've got some fun things I could play with. It's been a while since I've had a mark. Let's go. I always liked hunting. I put on like these like like gauntlets. They're they're not big. They're more like the thing app in uh in in infinity war when he does he does he does he doesn't have have his shield and it just kind of go like i like bring my arm back and it goes like all right let's get to work as you head out into the night overdrive are you going with them we yeah, kind of have to. Okay. I'm glad you're here, buddy. We really need you. Thanks, man. <laughs> really drive it. <laughs> part of the team. It's not like a, yeah. I'm sure you're okay. Yeah, I, you're. Thanks for the. Uh... Nope, not even gonna say it. I give Overdrive like a pat on the back that is like accidentally a little bit too strong. <laughs> Trying to like stumbles just a little bit. He's like, "Ah, oh, okay." Oh, got me there. <laughs> so, our heroes go out into the night, stalking after a vampire who is on the hunt. And we turn the page, and we see. Um, crying clown, a oh, no. mid-level mid supervillain who who has a gang. Um, they they have. Do they all come out of a small car? <laughs> oh no no no! This is an operatic clown. Um, this gets worse. Oh yeah, um, real piece of work. Uh, Likes knives, really likes knives, um, but always ends up for some reason crying when he's committing violence. It's a weird thing. Um, like he's cutting onions. But like always has at least one of his henchmen holding a boombox playing opera. Um, everything is very well staged. Like uses a lot of... Um, failed Broadway dancers as part of his henchman core group. Um, he knows how to recruit. Um, but you, we see him in this, this downtown high rise running as as many of his goons are just screaming in blood in terror and then it's gurgling voices as lights are going out like he is just stay barely staying in the light as one after one of his henchmen just disappear and then we just have this entire black page inky black page except for two red eyes. You know, this is the funniest thing I've ever done. And you just hear him scream. And that is where we're ending tonight. You're clowning me. <laughs> so thank you all so much folks um we're going to go quickly around the horn break and find these fantastic people what they're up to and as is a tradition for those of you who might know a little bit of my work um we're oh. dealing with superheroes we have the team comic but you obviously want to know what their individual comics are so as we go around please as part of your outro, describe your own hero's solo comic and what the next issue is. Please describe the cover as well. 
So someone else has to go first because I need an example. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I will give you an example. Um, so, Don, I go. It's the possums. No, no, no. You, that, that's a future problem. That's not a oh, current no. problem. That's a future problem. Um, but in the, in the on book stands right now, you can find Sanguine. Um, th this is because I love playing on things and I, I beg, borrow, and steal. This is Sanguine Blood Journal. That is the current one. And um, it, it's just a bunch of mid-level villains that are on a cork board. And some of their faces are just completely crossed out. And we it is just a, a row of individual villains that are now being written out as Sanguine is going to eat them. Um, and we just see four on this cork board that have yet to be marked out. One is Mississippi Mud, a a mud-based villain. Does do they have blood? I'm not entirely certain. Um, Honeybee. Um, she is a villain that communes with bees. It's really that simple, terrifying, and simple. I like the gather around her and make her fly. It's it's a thing. Uh, there is Gorilla Ice, a enhanced gorilla that has Iceman level ice powers. Um, he hates capitalists, but he loves relaxing on a couch and watching TV. So he's more of a low level villain that just like knocks over banks and stuff. He's very much a punch clock villain. And that he could do super villainy, like really high level stuff, but then you get punched by people like Superman, and that's a bad time. So he keeps to low level villainy, so he doesn't have to work as hard. Um, and last and certainly not least is Armory, a, a mid level tech villain, very much like Safe but they pride themselves on doing all their stuff in-house as opposed to qu acquiring things. Um, also, one of those tech villains that was wronged by a corporation that set them on their life of crime, very much like, has this just, this, this malevolent wanting to kill Elon Musk sort of thing going. Our, our I don't think killing Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk can be malevolent. I think I get moral quadri. Um, so these are the ones left on the court board for this issue. And that's what the issue follows is the sanguine over the course of this evening, just burning through these villains, their henchmen and eating as many of them as she can. And that's an example. So, with that, um, let's let's go around the horn here. Um, Kayla, where can we find you? What are you up to? And what is Strider's comedy? Hey guys, um, I'm again. I'm K Kayla Bell Belmont. You can find me on on Twitter at Kale Kale Kaleidoscopes. Um, I am a TRPG and game ga uh, game writer. Um, and right now I'm looking for, uh, for game work. So if anybody has any leads, hit me up. Cause I'm interested in tell, telling all those good stories that you want to share with friends and folks. Um, as for the solo comic, I, I, I think it's Strider number one and it, it's, it's, it's going to be a full page of where the ca the camera is slightly um up off of a what looks to be like this um 
just raggedy wooden ta 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 table or crate. Um, and you'll see some uh, some gangbangers there um, who are kind of um, stare, stare, staring around, around confused. And the main figure um, who's, who's most concerned is a supervillain um, who's kind of a cross between Black Mask and and the lit 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 the the lit the lit the lit the lizard, and he's called Komo 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 Komodo, and he's got one of those like big old just like just gangster guns off to one side and off in uh the ra the ra the rafters you can see like the outline of stra of stra of stra of stra of strider um and just about to pounce and it's called um out of the spotlight um and it's going to be his first run in with this mob boss and he's going to try to take him down fantastic Thank you so much, Kayla. And folks, definitely, if you're looking for someone to work with you, Kayla is an amazing storyteller. Great at what, what they do. So please reach out. Um, as we have seen within the community, it is important to ha hire good people. Kayla is good people. Okay. And on note of good people, Donna, where can we find you? What are you up to? And what is Overdrive's next issue? Oh my gosh, so many questions, so little time. I'm kidding. Hi guys, my name is Donna. I uh, You can find me at Twitter on X-I-A-B-R-O. It's Shabro. You, um, there I post everything that I'm involved in, which some of it is tabletop RPGs and some of it is voice acting. And so you can find me there um, and see any products that I'll be doing there. That's pretty much what I do. I'm a voice actress. I have a good time, play a lot of characters. That's it. Overdrive's issue is like really fun. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. So um, yeah, so like on the cover, there's Overdrive and then there's Apollo and they're back to back, very classy, very, very typical. Overdrive has um, his fingers out and a peace sign, whereas Apollo looks kind of rugged and they're surrounded by these faint outlines of people that have been suspected to be overdrive and so there's this youtube channel called daily hero news and they released a series <laughs> they released a series um well they release a video every single day about hero news but they recently have released this series called hero theory um and the series is about who is overdrive and Essentially, they have been pointing the blame or pointing the identity to several different mundane people and Overdrive goes to all of them and takes a selfie or a video and is like, yeah, we're not the same person, like try again. Um, and so <laughs> basically it's him beating up heroes, uh, beating up villains, <laughs> not heroes, beating up villains. <laughs> and then taking a selfie next to um, whoever hero theory thinks overdrive is um the problem is that as the series develops more tin hatters means more conspiracy theories means that overdrive may not be a human at the end of the day <laughs> Oof. very cool god is that you <laughs> the guy in the chair has all the power um, but someone who is quite powerful in their own way and knows a lot of powerful people would be Starla, played by Layla. Where can we find you and what are you up to? When, what's your issue for, for the mark? Me. So my name is Layla Bamanziari. You can find a link to my Twitter. I believe it's in the Twitch chat. It's El Um, This is kind of the TTRPG thing I'm doing right now. I'm open to other things. I love working with new people. This is certainly great. All of these people are great. Work with all of them. They're amazing. Um, 
am the I'm currently dramaturging for a show at First Floor Theater in Chicago. So if you're in Chicago and you're looking for a show to see, they're going to be putting on a really cool show. I think it's going to open in the beginning of May, but I'll have more information on that later. Um, and that's all for me for the mark. I think the title of their like little individual comment is um, the mark colon the X. And I think that this is me running into my, my ex is is honestly the comic strip. Um, it's I <laughs> I run into them. Let's say I run into them at the Boba place. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, and it's definitely one of those things where he doesn't go to the Boba place. So he definitely just went there like to bother me. Um, <laughs> that's definitely what happened. Um, and we get in and I look at him and I'm just like, hello, Hallam. Like I say it like that. Um, and that's the only way I say his name now is Callum. Um, and I, I honestly, I just go up to him and I go, stay out of my way, <laughs> except I don't laugh. <laughs> stay out of my way and stay out of my boba. <laughs> this is none of your boba business. And then I get my two cups of saffron boba, one of which I later give to Saskia. And I leave. That is amazing. I love this. You guys need to pick up these comics. Um, someone who has all the chaos all the time is Faye. Where can we find you? What are you up to? And what's Loki's comic? Uh, hi, I'm Faye. You can find me... Uh... Almost free on the three T's of the internet. AJ, you can't argue with me. I, you stole that. Uh, Twitch is Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Um, I have recently, I'm just coming back from taking a break from uh, Twitch. Three T's of the internet. You're wrong. You're objectively wrong, and you stole it. This is a this is a long ra ra I can't speak anymore. A long-standing rivalry between myself and AJ. Um, and yeah, so you can find me here. I might be making a return to my own Twitch channel. Who knows? Um, if you like cosplays, I cosplay over on TikTok. And other than that, I don't really know what I'm doing other than causing chaos. <laughs> I don't think you're- are you older? So Sorry, AJ is distracting me. Um, and Loki's comic is... There are two inspirations for this. I've, I'm imagining it is a new series that has just started for Loki and Saskia and it is somewhere of a cross between Multiverse of Madness and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Combine sure. them. Combine them. <laughs> and give Pope an aneurysm. <laughs> Sausage King of the Cosmos. <laughs> that's that's getting a little too close to Sausage Party. Oh. I like to party. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if anybody ever wants just like a shit ton of chaos in a game, hit me up. I'm here for it. Uh, the I, I can definitely attest to the chaos. Uh, and you were warned. I I was. I was warned <laughs> and well informed, but there it is one thing to be forewarned, it's another thing to experience. And now I have. Um like I, the 
probably the difference between watching Emily Axford play D and D and then having to <laughs> DM for Emily Axford playing D and D. I would adore being at the same table as Emily Axford. Oh yes, for sure. But yes, no. There, there's another thing. Like these people are amazing. Have them in your games. Hire them for your stuff. Again, if there's nothing else that we have learned over the the past few years now, as the stairs in pandemic, um, it's the importance of having good people in your life and cutting out the toxic. And these are good people. Um, as for me, hi, I'm Pope, Pope World Build on Twitter, Pope World Build on Twitch. I lurk in all your streams. Um, if you want to see more of my ridiculous face, there are a number of opportunities throughout the week. Coming up next is this Saturday over on Valdrian's channel, uh, where we return with another episode of Defiant, the, t the Trail of the Dead. Um, so yeah, it's the apocalypse. Things are not going incredibly well, even though we're in a pocket of reality that should be stable. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a giant flaming tree in the park, and all of the mortals are just randomly singing Firebird. Um, so that's a problem that um, the Defiant are going to try and solve. So if you want to see me play a reformed devil trying to save a city, tune in for that 9 p.m. Eastern, Valdrianth on Twitch. Uh, then on Sundays over on Weave the Tale, it's time for good doggos. Um, if you enjoy my ST style and want to see something kind of family friendly, uh, tune in 3 p.m. Eastern, Weave the Tale, as we play some Pugmire, What Lies Buried. Um, another great cast. Uh, they're just coming out of running into Fey Trouble, um, and they all play incredibly good dogs. It is a wonderful time and a delightful system that uses the 5e engine, but also acknowledges that levels 11 to 20 don't exist. Um... And so they don't. So you get to see something that is truly beautiful and unique on the mechanic side, but also just a, like if you love Redwall or a lot of those anthropomorphic style um, shows from back in the day, grew up with them, Pugmire is all that. So definitely come on by. We'd love to have you 3 p.m. Eastern Weave. Then on Monday nights, see me as a player in Simbaroom Stories, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, also on Weave. Um, yeah, that is something completely different. Come and see me play a very conflicted priest uh, in a dark and terrible world inspired by uh, Nordic myths. And we're going to die. We're going to die terribly. It, it, we're, we're in a small little, like, not even a fort. It's more like a, a fenced off inn. And there's a bunch of very angry goblins outside. They have magic and we're all doomed. We're doomed. So tune in for that on Monday. And then Wednesdays, something completely different. Um, 2 p.m. over on Follow Black Cats. Join us for the spy game Hexcrawl. If you want to see me play the most villainous character that I have ever had the privilege to bring to screen, please tune in as I play Chernobog, a spy who has absolutely no moral qualms and is incredibly violent. So please tune in for that if you want something a little more born inspired as our disaster spies try to take on capitalism. Um, and with that, come back around here on Thursdays for more mask advanced studies with these great people. And thank you all so much where you're watching live, VOD, YouTube, wherever you are, a story is nothing without its audience. You're much part of this as we are. Thank you all so much. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Love you all. See you soon. Take care.